Good morning, Rob, and welcome to another episode of Laneway Talks. How are you? I'm good, thank you, Vince. Thanks for having me. How are you? Oh, very good, thanks. Um, now, today, my Ooh. contribution to the show is I wanted to talk about um, uh, AI, which we spoke about a couple of weeks ago, and yes. uh, you sent me an article on. I and did. Uh, yeah, I had a good read of that, and, um, and uh, you know, I had a few things to contribute myself, so... Uh, let's uh, let's start there first, if if uh, you know that's okay with you. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. The article you're referring to, the AI curse by Peko and Ruth Gaskovsky. That's it. Yes. Yeah. Good, good, interesting, good, in, interesting read. So, I I wanted to start off with saying, well, um, you know, what is Chat GPT? You know, uh, or okay. Chat GPT. Uh, and <clears throat> I, I had a look at that, and you have to download, you know, you have to download it, and yada yada yada, and um, uh, and I would presume there's several iterations. I presume I'm, I'm not an expert at all on it. And I've got it on my computer. You've got it, have you? On my Mac, yeah. Right. So you have to download it then as a program. Ah, uh, yeah, it's like an app. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, and um, and what I wanted to Add to that is that, well, obviously, if you've got that downloaded, you can get it to um, create anything for you, I suppose. As the your article said, it created a, a video interview. Uh, but yeah, yeah, That's uh, Notebook AM they're talking about. Right, yeah, and it, and, but that's not visual. That just creates the text for a, a video interview. Is that correct? Um, I thought the software they were talking about was Notebook LM, which you put all of your resources into, like, your website page, your blog, uh, and all those other bits and pieces, and it creates a whole narrative and of what you're about. Um, oh, okay. I was kind of reading it again this morning, rereading it, and I go, wow, that's quite frightening. Um, well, because well, how are you ever going to know what's real and what's not anymore? Well, that's a good question, isn't it? So, well, yeah. you know, as I, as I do posts, Rob, um, every day, and whenever I do the posts, it always says, do you want AI to rewrite this for you? Mm -hmm. you? I don't know if you get that. I get that all the time. So I then... I think on that, you can go back as far as like, you know, words get underlined when you spell something wrong or there's a phrase wrong and it underlines it and says you can rephrase this. I mean, is that not AI as well? I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. No, I would Well, I wouldn't think so because... That's grammar and spell check for me. Um, still intelligent. Yeah, it's a, yeah, you're right. We used to, you know, that's been around for, what, 30 years? Right. That, that's yeah, yeah. Through, through Word and whatever. But, yep. you know, it asks me, do you, want to, do you want us to rewrite this for you? And, uh, and uh, I have a chuckle and I've said yes to it. And every time I've said yes to it, it changes essentially in my paragraph of the post probably one word, maybe two max. Now, yeah. is that telling me then, Rob, that I know what I'm talking about, so it's never going to help me that much because I know what I'm talking about in my in you know in my topic. I'm not trying to say I know what I'm talking about, but if it comes yeah. to music, I've got forty years ex experience, and so therefore I'm pretty knowledgeable. But if I was to write about I suppose something else medical, I got no idea. It's going to write it, and it'll probably change the whole thing. So when I had a look at that, I thought, well, that's going to help. That's only going to help the inexperienced or the unknowledgeable. In, and I'll, I'll stick to our, our industry of music, all right? I don't yeah. want to go outside of that. So it's going to rewrite it for the people that don't know what they're talking about. And so it's fantastic for them. I, the problem I have with that is we've got unknowledgeable people trying to be knowledgeable. Well, they may think they're knowledgeable, but they're not. So it's helping the wrong person and it's mm -hmm. promoting the wrong person. So I haven't used it since because, as I said, I used it a few times and it just didn't help me at all. It, in, a, in effect, probably made it sound even a little bit worse, um, too fabricated in putting the one or two words in. And so AI isn't a real help for me. But that's mm. just in, in, in a... 
let's call it social media post. Now, I haven't, you know, really tried chat GPT, and so I will, and I will do that this week. And I might put a topic in for Laneway Talks and see if it can expand on that for us. Um, yeah, I mean, on the, just to sort of butt in there, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, go for it. I use Otter AI, which is a, another artificial intelligence. Um, it's a transcription program, which I've talked about before. I'm mm. pretty sure. So um, I found, found that very helpful because it did all the interviews that I recorded for my research and work that I'd done with um, supervisors and at uni. When I recorded those conversations, it just basically transcribes those conversations for me. It doesn't change the wording. But don't you see the difference? The difference yeah, is enormous yeah. there. I'm talking about it writing something for you when you don't know what you're talking about and you're here talking about, well, it's transcribing. Yes, it's doing exactly what you want and perfect tool. But, but it does give me the option to rewrite it. So have you tried that before? Um, when I re-edit the Lane My Talks things, there's lots of really good suggestions and bullet points that it pulls out, which saves me hours of looking through notes about Lane My Talks, for instance, because I do that every week, as you know. Mm. You know I send that to you. I think I'm up to about episode 23 or something. That's correct. I've transcribed every episode that we've done. Um, and I find it very helpful because it bullet points the topics that we talk about, you know, which I like in future shows. You know, maybe we could summarize a lot of the shows that we've done. But um, I find that very helpful. It doesn't change the wording per se. It just gives you suggestions and bullet points of what we've actually talked about. Well, if, if you... Therefore, I'll take it back to the beginning of what I spoke about. It's not that helpful for me talking about topics I suppose I know about. So it's it's, it's of no real use. Now, I haven't tried the chat GPT, so I'll have to try that. But from an AI perspective of rewriting my sentence, uh, I'll call it a sentence because usually only one sentence in a post, and Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't help me uh, because it... I know what I'm talking about, so it's, it's no use. So, <laughs> um, so then I take it to, excuse me. I then take it to AI for music, and we you know mm-hmm. we've spoken about that before. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at the two differences here. You, you, I could call you a composer. All right. Yep. All right. You can't call me a composer. I don't write music. I don't write songs. Um, yep. I've just been the drummer in the band, so to speak, and pursued my other interests. So I've never really, you know, and I can play a bit of guitar and a bit of piano, and uh, so I muck around, but not a composer. So then we get AI in uh, music and in, in, in composition. And I have heard some of those. Some of them are really ordinary, uh, and some sound, you know, okay. Yeah. So... Have we got a a real, I suppose, trying to get the correlation between AI to rewrite your post and AI to write a song when you're not a composer or getting it to rewrite your song when you are a composer to try and fix any pieces on it? Have you got any thoughts on that? Um, I'll go against the current trend of anti-AI. I think it's great. Um, because if you put in your lyrics and the style of music that you want, it mm. will come back with a fully written song in that style and genre. And then you can be as specific as you want. Now, you're always going to be able to tell it's AI because it has a certain sound to it. Right. Um, what, you mean a, what, a, a synthesised sound? It, yeah, it's it's more than just synthesised. There is some sort of it's always bordering on distortion. Right. Um, it's quite strange. I've done it a lot. I've got quite a few songs that I've experimented with, um, with different lyrical themes and different musical ideas, and um, I find it fascinating. I actually quite enjoy listening to my AI playlist that's been created. Mm. Um, I haven't done anything with it. So, so, so they get AI created playlist. Is that of, of, of written AI-created music or just the playlist? Yeah, I, 
written like I think probably nine, nine or ten songs, and I have that as a playlist um, right, in my right. iTunes folder, yeah. and I listen to it from start to finish. And um, they're catchy, they're great hooks, the riffs are great, the playing's great, and they're all my lyrics or lyrics that you know I've worked with on, with other writers. Yeah, um, and they give you a good springboard to go. Okay, let's take this back because what I do is I rip that apart. Mm. I put it in a software program called Rip X, and it pulls all the tracks apart. So I can analyze the drum track that AI has created, and then I can actually use that to learn that drum track. Uh, and then I yeah, can okay. play the guitar track. Yep. And then the vocal track, I can mute and put our own vocal track in. So that's what I use it for. Mm. Um, it's very good with um, students who have ideas and can't quite get it over the line because it gives you something that you can create and then bring back. Yeah, yeah. And then – you can learn from that. So really, it's um, is it an ethical difference between if I did that with a Led Zeppelin song or a Deep Purple song or a Rush song or a Kiss song? You know, I could do the same thing, and I do do that. I rip them apart, and I just listen to the drum tracks or yeah. I just listen to the guitar tracks or I'll sing along with a vocal track or I'll play guitar with it. You know, uh-huh. I think they're really good learning things, and they're really good things to assist you, but there needs to be a transparency of this is what helped me do it. But, you know, in the studio, you've got effects, you know, you've got sequences. You know, I, where does I, that I, argument stop? Yeah, yeah, I, I don't understand that, you know, where they say you have to, sites are trying to force you to say, has the song been written with AI and or has AI contributed to it, especially in YouTube. They push it big time on YouTube um, Interesting, video, it? yeah. And yeah. Uh, I, I don't understand that because... As you just said, we'll go into the studio to record. Well, there's all those tools in there. I can make it sound perfect. And it's the same with video. We've had, um, you know, uh, um, video effects and whatever for the last 30 years. Yeah. So, therefore, why? what's the difference? I, I don't get it. I don't get why we have to tell you anything. It's just a natural progression in the form of what we're working on, whether it be music or vision. And, yeah, well, it's it's technology, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just oh, using technology. I, I, I don't I don't understand it, and I don't understand why you have to declare it. Um, I I just do not get that. Um, I know. think that for me, the beginning of you know the AI curse is what we're talking about. You know, the subject matter that sort of inspired this conversation this morning. But the opening line there, the quote is: "Nothing vast enters the life of mortals without a curse." Um, which is a Sophocles quote, um, Greek philosopher. I'm assuming I'm making that up. But anyway, um, I think that's what technology is. I think that you could basically parallel it. That's the curse of technology. You know, where is the line drawn? Well, you know, <clears throat> let's, let's move it along then a bit and say, well, <laughs> ten, 10 years ago, yeah, 12, 14, 15 years, no, 15 years ago, we then got PlayStation 2 with Guitar Hero. I used to love yeah. Guitar Hero, loved it. And, mm. you know, get we'd get in there with the kids and we'd play along and it was great fun. And yeah. um, and and that's died off. You know, you, I, don't, I don't believe it exists anymore. Um, so Guitar Hero's gone, but the concept was still great. Imagine how mm. good it could be today. They could make it brilliant with the uh, you know different equipment they give with you, the guitar itself. And so yeah. it could be great. Well, uh, what we move that on to is Lava Genie guitar, which is a new, uh, um, well, a new electronic guitar, which has, you know, a thousand samples in it and whatever. So, and it, it has push buttons and it has a lever instead of strings. And, you know, so therefore you can take it with you anywhere, play anywhere and mm. um, play along and then you can link it to your phone and your headphones and away we go. So that is a new product. It, it does look fantastic. Well, the visually I think it looks terrible. Uh, I think they could have done a great job trying to make it futuristic, but that's what they've done, try to make it futuristic, but they could make it, to me, look like a real a normal guitar um, that we, you know, are used to. But put that aside, the mm. concept of what's built into it to me is really good. And um, 
and then and that's what made me think of Guitar Hero, which came with you know so many tracks and you could play along and whatever, and it it was great. But we've now moved to that. So why would Guitar Hero die off? Why is that because everything's online and does? And I ask this genuinely, so don't laugh. Does PlayStation even still exist? Do you buy a PlayStation, or is it all online? I don't know. Right, I'd, so you're the same as me. We, I don't enter the gaming world because it's yeah, yeah. Well, it's time. It's a rabbit hole. Yeah, well, it's a rabbit hole that you just end up living in. And well, I know yeah. lots of people that are just gamers, and that's all they do. Well, you know that could be the case for for me. Uh, there was a lot of enjoyable hours, but very limited time, so I could only play, play it sparingly. So I don't mm. know whether it exists its own product. But so you know, we've we've moved away from that into, as I say, a standalone. And uh, you know, we've always had keyboards, so they're different because you know they um, they've always been electronic in a sense, and so they've had their thing. So you know. Mm. Um, I think from the AI perspective for me, I'm still very naive. You, you've taken a much more closer stance on the topic by utilising it and you're quite familiar with it, uh, yeah. obviously, from what you said and you've really embraced it and are using it, whereas I'm the opposite. I'm not against it in the least. Uh, the progression of natural society and how we live and, you know, whatever, whether it be petrol-driven cars to electric-driven cars. It's just happening and that's that. But you've, yeah. you've actually embraced it a lot more, so I understand it more than me. Um, yeah, I think that the joy for me, I, you know, and also it's a dichotomy um, between joy and hate, that I've lived through the time where I've seen the invention of a lot of the technology from digital drums and digital effects and sampling pedals and um, studio plugins and, you know, digital audio workstations. And I, I've seen it from where we went from, you know, 24 track recorders in the studio and how hard you had to work to get things and as effects units were created and it was so expensive back in the day and mm. you know, how much studios, professional studio stuff cost. Um, technology made that more accessible to a lot more people and it's I think it's pretty much the same thing but it's just fascinating that you still have to put in the time because garbage in is garbage out mm. Um, mm. and I really believe that. If you put in the time and the effort to understand what all of this is, I think that you can create some amazing things and you can create things that still say, say along the genre lines of what people are trying to relate to. Um, and I say that by, you know, people will like certain things and different people will like different things. And, you know, there's all these different now, they label them as genres. I'm talking about music. Mm. Um, but you can, there's more guidelines for that now. And I said, think if you experiment with the technology, um, embrace it because I don't think we're going to be able to fight against it because I think it's there for good. Can I ask you? Can I ask you about drumming? And yeah. If we go back to the early '80s, we had the syndrome, so you'd always have one or two if you if you're wealthy. Ooh. Well, yeah, if you're wealthy enough to have the money for it, right? They were expensive. I used to sell them. Yeah. So you had the syndrome. So that was the first form, really, of electronic drums, and. Then we get to where we are today with the rolling, let's use the rolling kits, who cares, yeah. but a full-on drum kit that's electronic. Now, if you then go to, um, you know, trying to write a song with um, sampled drums in it, whatever, played by a sampler, not by a human, I still find... It sequence. Sound, it seem yeah, or sequence. It it seem it still sounds terrible. It does. All right. So we haven't been able to bring artificial intelligence across to that yet, have we? Well, it's the key word in that artificial intelligence is it's artificial, and that's the thing that they can't synthesise. It's the way that the human brain hears and basically responds to all of that. You know, that's not artificial, that's organic. There's two completely different processing things. And you mm. will always know it's artificial. Um, 
That's very interesting, isn't it? So it hasn't transcended that, and that's many, many years away still, you would think. Well, I don't think it will unless we transcend into, you know, digital implants in our brains, which is, you know. Right. And well, then, you know, the, the two the two will marry up. Um, but I don't think, I still think it's always going to be sounding synthesised and artificial. Well, I saw, I, I saw an article on um, uh, robots, and there's this dichotomy between Amazon and what they're doing with robots and what Tesla, uh, Elon Musk, is doing with robots. So at Amazon, their robots look like robots in the sense that it looks like one of those robotic vacuum cleaners that goes along and does stuff or, you know, bigger and whatever. And yep. they specifically said that they designed theirs that way and went that way to to um, differentiate. They didn't want it looking too human and they want that differentiation. And so I, I got it totally. And whereas you go to Elon Musk and his robots look like a robot, a human put into a, a robot, but no skin or whatever. So still a very robot looking, but, you know, with two legs, two arms, a head and whatever. And and there was those questions, why do you even need a head on it? Because what, what well, actually the good one was, why do you need eyes? And it's because we we look and we think, well, it must have eyes to look, where it doesn't need eyes yeah. to look. And... Yeah. So, but why? But we do it to make it look human. So we've got the first form of a robot looking like a human, even though it doesn't really look like a human. And then he had it kicking a football through the goals and it was perfect. So he could pick mm. everything and kick the football through the goals. Mm. And then you've got the Amazon um, side of it. So you've got that dichotomy between the two. And there's a, a real difference between what, what they're trying to develop and what will develop and why. And then you get to what we talked about in drumming there and we go, wow, it's it's many years off yet. Um, uh, so um, therefore, could I get that robot Elon Musk to sit down and play drums? I'm, I'm sure we could. Could Have it you do seen? Go on. Haven't you seen those heavy metal videos of the robots playing thrash no. metal? No, no, not but at all. It's fantastic. And they play it really well? Oh, ridiculous. And but, ridiculously fast and not a wrong note. <laughs> so, so therefore, but therefore what you're saying to me is it can play drums in a human fashion with a human feel to it. No, in, in my ah. opinion, it's horrible sounding music, but it's right, really right. well really well played and really well. It's the whole band. It's the guitar player, the yeah. um, bass player and the drummer. They're all... Robots. So I, one thing I disagree with you is, well, will we ever have that unless we put, say, an implant to a human? I think, therefore, give it 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, I don't know how long. But they will be able to make that robot have all the intuitions of a human. It's a, just a matter of electronics, you know, and programming. Yeah. Yeah, it is, but there's always going to be that organic component that they're going, never going to be able to replicate. Well, we'll, we'll only tell, won't we, in the next 10 to 60 years. So, yeah, yeah. yeah so interesting with that. Um, yeah. Well, you know, it's, things are changing that quickly, Rob, that, uh, you know, we just never know when it could come and when it will happen. Um, anyway, that was the discussion on AI. So I basically I think where did we get to with this discussion of AI? that I'm naive, <clears throat> that I feel that if I'm writing something that I know a lot about, it doesn't help me at all, uh, mm. and so therefore I don't need it. Uh, whereas from a music perspective, you've actually written some songs with it and find it a quite a useful tool to assist you with your writing. Yeah, I do. I, I think so. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, quite, you know, there's a big difference there between the two of us, only because I, I can't write a song, but... Um, but from the perspective of writing and whatever. Uh, anyway, another um, another thing I wanted to bring up this week was the the um, the strikes that you can get in YouTube and on Spotify. YouTube's easy. Yeah. You can get strikes on YouTube for doing things which they find uh, 
illegal within their concept of their site. And um, it can, you know, they give you a couple of strikes or copyright strikes, those kind of things. But mm. from Spotify perspective, we have this thing about, you know, minimum streams and you don't get paid and also about not getting your songs played with bots. And, um, you know, we recently had an artist who didn't knowingly do it. So what what uh, he'd done is he had he's, he was paying to get his site his song onto playlists or getting curators to present to other curators the song to be placed on playlists and therefore you pay for it financially. Now, if you're naive about it, you think it's all fairly okay. Well, I think what you would know and what I know, as soon as you have to pay to be on a playlist, oh, there's dodginess right from the beginning. Yeah. Um, very few real ones where it's real and you've got to pay for it. So um, it should be free to get onto the playlist and it should be on a basis of does it fit within that playlist. So... <laughs> So, it doesn't yeah, go really make sense to me because there's a couple of instances. I know a few people that have, you know, I don't know it happens a lot, but the, the instances that I know firsthand, people that pay for likes or pay for... Um, well, likes is one thing, mate. We're not talking about paying for likes. Yeah, I know, but, but pay, uh, Ash Robbo um, put up a post about band, a Melbourne band, what is it, 500 Facebook followers, 800 Insta followers, and celebrating the announcement of 500,000 streams of one of their songs. Now, they've obviously paid for that. Obviously. <laughs> obviously. You know, because you know, the evidence would support that they're not that popular because they haven't got a big following on Insta or Facebook. Yeah. Um, but yet, yet they've got 500,000 streams. So they've obviously paid for it. So if you paid for it, Spotify then, how I understand it, but Spotify then bust you for paying for bots. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to get to. Yeah, that's what I was going to get. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. So we've never had one before, but we just got one recently where they had uh, put in a fine. They fine you a dollar value, and but it's not (laughs) really significant. I think what it is is more a um, uh, well, you know, we're telling you. That we think you're you've got uh, false plays, and I won't use the bots. I'll just say false because it could come from uh, whole new areas which we don't even know about yet, and uh, and mm. therefore we're finding you. And this is to let you know we know. Now, if you get that that comes up again and you continue with it, we will ban you off. That that track will be banned off Spotify. Okay, so it's banned taken down, never to go back up again. So Mm -hmm. that's the severity, that part of it, because if you're trying to promote your new song, well, you're finished. And, you know, they control most of the market. So, you know, artists out there need to be very careful about this. Uh, And then when I start to talk to our artists about it, some of our artists, they're not aware of it. They're genuinely, more the older heritage artists, are not, not aware of it and... I say, if you have to pay to be on a playlist, it's dodgy from that point onwards. Yeah. You you need to. Now, if you try to go to curators and get onto playlists, 99% of them will reject you and then come back with a, but you know you can pay and we'll get you on the playlist. And that's their modus operandi, how to get you. It's the, you know. But that, that's the bit that doesn't make sense. You have to pay for plays anyway. But yet Spotify are going to penalise you for paying for play. You say, yeah? No, yeah, I don't understand what you're talking about. Explain that again. If you want your music boosted, you can pay a company to boost that amount of plays for you. But the conversation well, we're no. having is... Well, no, not, not, no, no not, not really. I mean, um, I can boost a post to try and get people to click on a link to play it. That's different. I've... I'm getting, <clears throat> I'm getting the um, recipient of the post uh, to click and listen. That's a different thing altogether. I'm not paying them to do it, am I? But are you paying a company to get more 
No, well, if on Facebook, well, if I do a campaign on Facebook for a post, the post says, listen to Rob Boundy and Virgin Soldiers is a great new track. Then, uh, um, uh, I then put uh, a learn button on there or a listen button on there and you click on that and you uh, essentially want to learn about the artist or you want to listen and it'll take you to the listening and mm -hmm. therefore... Uh, but you have to click on it, so I haven't paid for the for the listen. I, uh, all I've done is paid to let you know it's available. Now we know there's a glut of music in the music industry, oh, no, in the world. There's a glut of music, too much music, not enough listeners. Uh, with the invent of digital and the digital world, so in that circumstance, I'm trying to get to my audience. Uh, in a different way than we did in the analog world. So uh, all I'm doing is directing it to you. Now, if I get a bot to play it on a playlist, and the playlist is kind of fictitious because it's manipulated by bots, well, that is completely illegal in the sense because you're asking for money from Spotify. Uh, you're defrauding them because you're you're uh, getting bots to play the song a million times and for the million I might get $4,000, all right, 5000 6000 7000 around there, dollars for the million plays. So in a sense, wouldn't you say that's defrauding Spotify? I think it would be. It is, but, you know, it's kind of payola in the digital realm, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, with many factors, it, it is defrauding them. And so, therefore, <clears throat> you will be banned. So, artists need to be very careful about playlisting and trying to pay. And there's digital radio is exactly the same as play, mm -hmm. paying these playlists. Um, they're digital radio stations, which are not digital radio stations. And essentially, their their list of songs they're playing is a playlist. <laughs> nothing, Nothing more just surrounded in the word digital radio. So um, they are, you know, as I said, we, we've never had one before. So we got, our, we got our first one and, um, you know, we've talked to the artist about it and gone through it and trying to get them to delve down to which one it was, right, which song, we, we know which song it is because I tell you, but... Where, where did it go? What playlist did you get it on? Or was it just one? So therefore you can identify it fairly quickly. So, so what, what, what happened? Uh, well, well um, he'd bought the, he'd, he'd been buy, get, paying a curator to get to curators to try and get his song added to playlist. Fairly normal. Okay. And if you can get the genuine one, submit hub, submit uh, hub.com is one if you can get the real ones that's it's a good thing it's what you're trying to do even on submithub.com though you get to a lot of them and you and they're free so you get to the curator and then they come back to you and go you know but we do have a program where you can pay to get on you know so you've got to be careful there too but it's a pretty reputable site so you're you're paying people to try and pitch to all these playlists Get you on well what they do is they're pitching you to the ones they know um and whether they cut themselves in for half the money or whatever and they get you on there and you get played and yada 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 well you've got to get yourself taken off those because that'll continue on for usually three to four weeks or sometimes eight weeks mm -hmm. and you're getting fictitious streams and what spotify are doing are they tracking down that the streams are coming from Fictitious people, can't be people, can it? Fictitious bots because they yeah. can't trace them and that's what they do. So um, I suppose um, if I look at Spotify and say, but what about songs that are generated with AI? And remember we spoke about this about two months ago where the yeah. song had gotten 20 million streams but we couldn't track uh, the the artist, so we couldn't find out who the artist was. So that seems to be okay, though. Yeah, that comes back to the original 
AI curse topic we were talking about, now you can basically get a digital replica of a human playing your AI-generated song and you won't be able to pick the difference whether it's real or not. Um, well, well, forget your song. Forget, <laughs> forget your song. Remember we spoke about um, on YouTube, uh, on Spotify, there'd been songs, and we don't know whether it was Spotify themselves or someone else, songs which had been generated by AI, they'd yeah. made them a hit so they could put them onto their playlists and everything, mm-hmm. all right, yeah. the big ones, yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. they generated whatever it was, 20, 40, 50 million, so there's a lot of money involved, and if 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 it was Spotify or someone else, they are raking in all that money. But we couldn't track. Remember there was the one where they went to YouTube and the same artist was on there and they'd had 200 streams. That's right, yeah. But 25 million on Spotify. So is that any different from you paying a playlist to play your song and then it's all bots behind there? Interesting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, that's so, um, quite it's, – it's not transparent. Spotify no. don't give you all the truth, I don't think. I'm with you. So uh, I'm with you. I think that it's not transparent and there's there's going to be several years of this trying to sort itself out. On Laneway Red, you can't do it. It's the way you do your playlists and whatever and it, it, it's not going to be a, a, applicable to us so it's not going to be an issue for us and for yeah. advertisers. But um, on Spotify, yeah, it's a big issue. So... Um, you know, I wanted I wanted to bring that up because I think that, you know, yeah. artists yeah. have to be very well aware you will get pinged if you're doing a lot of this and it's real. As I said, I've never seen it before, but we got our first one and again we had to really speak to our artist about it because they weren't even aware of it, you know. And they weren't aware that it was a bot site or whatever doing it. So it's um it's real and it's happening and you can get pinged. Anyway, yeah. that, that's from me for the week. What what do you got, Rob? What's been going on? Well, we kind of, you know, cross paths with the same topic. Um, I just a friend of mine's released a couple of CDs this week. He came into the shop uh, on Friday. I've spoken about this artist before, Rob O'Connell. Rob O'Connell. Um, have you spoken about him before? Yes, I have. Have you? Yep. Yeah, well, he's the singer that, um, you know, Kid Blast and the All-Star cast, we recorded Heroes. Right, um, and right, great and great. Uh, I love your Well, your version is fairly similar, but um, the original, but Jesus, it's a good job you did there. Good job. Yeah, thanks. I, I really like it. Um, and, yeah, Rob's the singer on that. He's a great voice. But oh, right, he, he resides in Melbourne, doesn't he? He does, yes. His yeah. band Safari, Safari Set released yeah. a couple of CDs. So, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Um, and I've had a listen, and once again, it's um, super creative. Sounds very similar to what's early '80s sort of pop punk in a way. It's kind of oingo boingo, lots oh, of yeah. really good riffs, oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Yep. Good vocal hooks, and well recorded. It's uh, I think it was recorded here and remixed in Melbourne at Guffland Studios. Mark Lowry, David Briggs. Oh yeah. David Briggs, good master. Yeah, mastered it. Um, yeah, so it's that's been really good to have refreshing new product from the 80s. I, I love what Rob's done with that. They've gone and they've re-recorded songs that they wrote back in the 80s, um, you know, from bands like ourselves. We all sort of played in bands in the 80s and mm. um, re-released them. And they're really good versions of really good quality versions. Um well, well I heard I heard a version of Heroes uh, with Duff McKagan, you know, from Guns N' Roses uh, yeah, right. on it, and it was sensational. Now, again, fairly similar, but it was the lead break in there uh, by whoever was playing lead um, that was really wasn't good. Sl- hey? It wasn't Slash? No, 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 no. Uh, it was uh, someone, Jones. Um, anyway, it was really good. Yeah. And um, uh, I just thought that made the difference, the lead break, because in the original with David Bowie, there's not really any lead break. Uh, uh, so I think, yeah, some artists can put their own slant on those kind of songs and really yeah. show a bit of a difference, and they are classic songs, and you can't help but like them. Um, I'm not sure young people would like it. I don't know that they 
they get that, um, uh, uh, you know, it's a, um, oh, what the rhythm in it is symphonic in that, you know, you, you sing along with it. And I'm not sure they get it when they're singing. They're actually singing all the words of some song and it's like, oh, God, mm. how do you even know the words? And there's a song that is all forgotten about four weeks later. Yeah, I think their ears are tuned differently to ours. I mean, I know that's a scientific fact that it happens because um, I did that in my first year undergrad at uni on um, how human ears are shaped by the sound that they're exposed to. Yeah. The sounds that we were exposed to back in the 60s, 70s, 80s. Yeah. Uh, was analogue and completely different medium to what it is now in digital. So I think kids hear things that we don't hear. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. And that's... And yeah, they they're really good at remembering lyrics to songs, as you say. That you know they're here today, gone later today, sort of. But they memorise them so quick. Unbelievable, yeah. you know. It's I, interesting, isn't it? Yeah, Fashion. yeah. And I'm a guy that never used to. I never used to um, <laughs> know the lyrics. I I could I sing to bits of it, but it was all about the song and the vocal sound, not the lyrics itself. And so yeah. I find it amazing when I see them singing along to some song, right? And then they've got the next one and they're singing along to it. Man, it's, um, you know, anyway. I didn't know that they were as intelligent as us going back because uh, we had to learn it in, in a rote fashion. And yeah. now kids are, are doing their university uh, degrees and using AI to write a lot of their uh, answers and therefore I... My personal opinion is how could their intelligence level be up there when they're not having to think about it so much and stress their brain out? Now, I could be wrong because they may be concentrating on other levels um, mentally and therefore they are, but I doubt it. I think that, you know, um, you know, like knowing how to use the times table or how to calculate, multiply uh, without a calculator... Or whatever. Well, see, that was the same technological revolution, wasn't it? You know, um, I remember playing for years with a slide rule. Mm. Um, you know, my sister used to use slide rules and get exam, have yeah. examinations on using slide yeah, rules. And, exactly. And yeah. Maths, yeah. Um, which is, I suppose, a more primitive form of technology. But then when the digital calculator came out, you know, I was kind of flabbergasted as well. I go, well, we don't have to. You're never going to have to learn your times tables again. <laughs> no, that's right. Anyway. But I think they're important things to learn, though. No, I agree. Yeah. Well, I think that's it for this week. I think we're done. Is there anything else you want to discuss, Rob? Um, well, well, you know, we finished up with a pageant. We performed in front of uh, 325,000 people on the weekend. So I did see yeah. all your pictures there that you sent me. Very nice. Did you see that? Yes. And we've been featured in the promo for it, which was really good. Um and um, lots of good feedback. So, yeah, that, I mean, that was a lot of work. It was like six months prep to get up. Another year time. gone, Rob. Another year gone. On to the next one. Yeah, I know, but it comes back, you know, to that point of how much time that things take to do. Production, music, creation. Um, you know, you've got the idea, then you have to implement the idea and, you have to edit it and write it and rehearse it. You know, they're all really important things, especially for musicians, you know, what we're talking about. You know, as you know, even doing this, doing Lomay Talk, you know, the amount of prep in it um, is great. The um, learning curve, um, you know, I hope my head isn't as shiny this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's, uh, you know, you use new equipment, you just got to get used to it and, uh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and adapt to it. But um, anyway, that's about it, and just plenty happening with Laneway Red. It's just bubbling yep. along, and, you know, we we keep looking at our analytics. Uh, you know, we have a board meeting um, Saturday week to go over a lot of stuff. It, uh, you know, it's just bubbling along and doing its stuff, and the, the reality of Laneway Red uh, is becoming more evident that... <clears throat> as it gets played more, is that it's about trust in the word or the visual, laneway yep. red. And that trust uh, will take quite a long time to build. Nothing's happening overnight. 
but we are seeing that trust build on it. You know, if not very slowly, it's building and people streaming. And, um, you know, we'll look at our next next set of enhancements to what we're delivering. Um, of course, yeah. you know, yeah, all the things <clears throat> people need to be well, well aware about is that, uh, you know, it, it's not an app, it's a website at this stage, but it works very nicely on your phone. It doesn't have all those extra features of apps and it will be a while before we have an app um and so it has its limitations but it's it's a growing uh, it's a growing um, piece of software and if mm. it grows organically rob it grows it grows with with trust because it is organic and um you know what we're trying to d deliver long term is uh, decent outcomes for artists at this stage. No, there's no real money to them on Laneway Red. What we do say to artists, I have copped it a bit online. We, we cop a lot of abuse and we hide it on our Facebook and YouTube and whatever because um, yeah, it's it's a pretty abusive world out there, Rob. And um, Keyboard warriors. All right, Keep Rob. Keep the content coming. Hey, yeah, yeah, keep the content keep the coming. Keep the content coming. Oh, man, the amount of stuff we're putting up on Laneway Red, it's, we're so far behind. My, I've got sore hands, RSI. It's just so much stuff going in um, and so much more to go in. Anyway. But are you doing any practice? No, I'm not. You know, the guilty part was I was just on the cusp the other day. I walked, on the cusp? Yeah, I walked towards the drum kit and I was going to do 15 minutes of rudiments. And 15 minutes, yeah. And then I, I'm not kidding. I looked at my phone and there was a message from an artist, and I, I had to answer. Look, you know, it's my obligation to to answer their question. And um, and that was the end of that. So ask me that question again next week, okay? Okay, well, I put up a couple of triplet things in my shorts this yeah, week, yeah. Um, from live experiences of me fumbling my way through drum solos back in the 80s. Um, but yeah, got to I think that's what it comes back to. Like, you know, everyone can go blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, just keep working on your own stuff, yeah. practicing, yeah. writing, creating and supporting, you know. Absolutely. Keep it positive, people. Yeah, keep absolutely. It positive. All right. Good talking to you, Rob. Talk to you next week. You too. Thanks, Vince. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye-bye.